This is the second in a series I'm making about esoteric psychology and I really made the point in the first video about how we really are an assembly of energies and if you take away the judgment part and the ego part and say this is somebody's fault and they did that and they should be guilty about that and if you look at just the way energy is used in relationships because we have energy that's what we're composed of I mean that's the literal truth we're composed of a lot of energy we have a lot of mental energy physical energy emotional energy body heat energy all that's carrying us along here and we know, I mean, this again, this question is who is perceiving? Because all the great sages, if you look at they say what they say basically is, okay, stop for a second. You're not permanent here. Whoever you think you are, whether you're a king or a beggar or whatever, you're not permanent here. No way. That's it. So for that, and now it's just a question of time. That you are just like a flickering candle and boom. Okay, at least that body part, at least this particular series of energy. Now, the question is, okay, is that it? Well, the greatest said, sages said, well, okay, as far as your body, no, that's not you. Yes, that is impermanent. But, you keep asking that question and you realize that if you can harmonize your, your collection of energies and get more aware, then the increased amount of field that you have, your awareness is literally more energy and that if you have sufficient energy then in the teachings of some ancient cultures they said if you have sufficient energy then you literally, your body, your, your being, let's say <laughs> there's a sort of a bubble you might say that when you die and this uh, certain reflective part of the energy you, your body heat goes away, the moisture goes away, the air goes away, some electricity, but somehow there's a nugget in there of a different kind of energy depending on how much you harmonize, be, be, depending on how strong your field was at the time of death, that there could be some way for that bubble you might say of streaming energy, that nucleus you might say, to find its way into like a seed as a soul gets born into another body. This is what they said. It's very fascinating. But it's a lot more complicated than saying, hey, you know, once again, upon a time, I was uh, King George III or something. No, <laughs> that's a little silly. But on the other hand, there might be something to the idea that our energy systems get repackaged, you might say, as we go on through this. So the idea of esoteric psychology involves some awareness that's way beyond the body. And the yogis, there's many, 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 many yogis and even people living today that are alive today, people in India that demonstrate, okay, I have, we have perceptions that are really difficult to describe. Because all of our consciousness, all this thing that what we are, it's actually available to us if we sharpen our brain and use certain tools so that we have a, a link. Basically, there is a concept that's used in esoteric psychology called a word called the Anhakarana. And what it is, is basically a bridge. It's a bridge between our conscious perception and the unconscious, or a bridge between the underlying non-fluctuating awareness and the mind, if the mind is still, then the underlying non-fluctuating awareness can go shoot right through like a laser and boom. As long as the body's pure and other things and conditions are good, then that underlying non-fluctuating awareness, which is light, it's a type of light, it's an inner light energy, that can perceive a lot more clearer. Because the reactions to what it perceived are gone. Now, that brings up a question, well, how do you do that? Well, it's not that easy. I remember this phrase from some yogi I heard about, I think it was Buddha, and he said, well, someone asked him, well, how long will it take for me to realize this uh, vision state? So be it come one with my underlying non-fluctuating awareness. He said, don't just do absolutely nothing for 15 seconds, but... <laughs> First of all, trying to do nothing is difficult, and doing it for 15 seconds is also difficult. So, what it is, is if you can train the mind to not react, that is, okay, compassion, understanding, humility, reflectiveness, make our perception, 
like a clear glass of water, just a clear, 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 reflective. Get this mind clear, and then we'll get a whole stream of revelations. So if you get your mind still for one hour, the amount that you get from this underlying non-fluctuating awareness, this stream of energy and consciousness, is just absolutely amazing. The understanding. So we flood our brain with this inner light and so on. Now, modern psychology, I happen to know some people who practice uh, psychotherapy. Very, very fascinating field, very interesting. It's a real challenging field to get into. But again, this question is who is perceiving? And I think it's a lifetime of trying to understand, well, what is it that perceives? We have some hints from some of these yogis. We have some hints from a very, very long time ago. So you try to understand a little bit about it, and you realize that, look, there's a lot more to it. Because when we see other people, we don't know what kind of things are in them in their mind, in their psyche. We don't understand that because the mind as it goes on and on and on, let's for example, in our, our field, it's like a container. You can charge it up. You can fill it up with all kinds of garbage. You can dump it by different techniques. You can go swimming. You can go relax. You can take a sunlight or you can take a bath and you can just do all kinds of stuff to help your own presence. But you also take in stuff during the day. It's a various kinds of energy. You might say like bubbles of garbage. You go riding the subway or something. You go to a really nasty place and you start feeling, oh my God, I'm just full of this stuff. Well, you go out in nature and go hug a tree or something. Or a dog. <laughs> That'll help. But we have to have, again, that bridge, because it's a very important concept. The bridge between the, our perception is limited, no doubt about it. This is another factor that we have to cut, get a grip on. We perceive, all of our human perceptions, generally speaking, cover a very, very narrow range. Except, we can train ourselves to have increasing awareness. That is literally possible. It's very wrong to assume that all human beings are, have the same kind of perception because it's completely false. We hear, we hear differently, we see differently. There are people who are colorblind, there are people who don't hear very well, there are people who hear very acutely, there are people who have visions continuously, you know, if they want them and so on. No. As far as understanding where it's better to investigate this consciousness, and this is again what old, uh, esoteric psychology is about is trying to get a stream of this internal light coming into our brain so that our mind becomes even more informed and more clear so the focused mind can bring a beam like a laser because the yogis I'll tell you this one little quick thing here a lot of people know about the third eye there is an eye, you might say, at the top of the head, in a similar manner, a psychic eye. There's another plane of consciousness in the back of the head. When these are integrated, the whole body can be an experiencing organ, a whole complete system of experience. And one thing to explore, I'll have to make some more videos, appreciate people watching, I'm sure you're going to stir up a lot of stuff by this uh, you know, commentary on psychology because uh, I have some unusual aspects about it. But anyway, thanks again for watching.